Hello, and welcome to the most serious talk of Reactathon, an incredibly serious discussion about Next.js. I'm your incredibly serious speaker, Cassidy Williams. You can find my very serious handle, Cassidy, on Twitter, on GitHub, or just Google it. You'll find some very serious results. Now in this talk, I want to talk about serious business, because being serious is serious business. If you use React, chances are you've heard of Next.js, the React framework. Next.js is very, very serious. It has a lot of serious business built in. With Next.js, you can use SSR and SSG, that's server-side rendering and static site generation, in a single application. The routing system is file system based routing, and so if you have a file in a certain directory, it's an automatic route, and this includes dynamic routes as well. You can programmatically update the site's head and a bunch of other features per page, and there's a lot of built-in components for that as well. It has a very powerful API. Plus, there's some really cool developer experience features like code splitting, absolute imports, and CSS and JS already built in natively in Next.js. You don't have to install any extra loaders on top of that. Serious developers use Next.js. But also nerds do too. And today we're going to be talking about pranking people. Hooray! Because yes, you can do all kinds of serious scaling cool stuff with Next.js. And that's what most talks are going to be about, about Next.js, so why not do something fun for once? And that's right, we're going to be pranking people with Next.js. So first I want to show you some really basic things on how to set up Next.js, how a certain page works and how a website might look. But then beyond that, we're going to use some of these features to build a fun little prank website. Woohoo! Okay, so first of all, this is our next Netlify starter project. If you'd like to look it up, you can find it on GitHub at github.com slash Cassidy slash nextnetlifystarter. It's a very, very basic project, and if you look at the result, you'll see it's just a welcome to my app. It's, it's, that's it. So let's actually look at the code a little bit, just so you can kind of get familiar with it. So first of all, this is a very simple thing where we have a header component and then this description. This header component is inside the components directory, and it's truly just a function that exports a header component. It's really not that thrilling. Um, and then inside the head, this head right here is actually a Next API. And so when you have a Next.js site, anything you put in the head will update in the title of the page. And so right now the tab over here says Next.js starter, but if I were to update it saying Next.js demo and then save that, when the page refreshes, you see Next.js demo. Hey, not too, not too crazy, right? All right. So if you look in the directories here on the side, pages is really the only thing that you need to get up and running with Next.js. In pages, that's where all your routes are. So in index.js, index.js is the index page, the home page of your website. In app.js, this is a global wrapper. Um, and in app.js, you don't really do much. It's really just something if you want to install something globally throughout your application, which, for example, I want to import styles globally across my application. And so I have this globals.css. Inside of here, I just have some basic centering and stuff. If you see on the application over here, you can see it's really just centered. <laughs> so that's what the global styles are. And that's what's imported in the app.js, which is automatically wrapping any other page that you might have in this application. And then this footer component, I have a footer.js, which is a pretty simple thing. It's an HTML footer, but one thing you might notice is I have styles from a CSS module. CSS modules are automatically built into Next.js, so if you want to use them, you can just use them. You don't have to add any loaders or anything. So this is a very, very basic site. If you'd like to do a little bit more with it, you can by, for example, adding another page. And let's just say, I want to say funpage.js. Now in this fun page, I'm going to copy all of this from index and put it in here. And then I'll just say, this is very fun. And we'll leave it at that. We'll call it fun page. 
like that. See how fun that is? Wild. Okay, now if we go over to our browser, and then we go to slash fun page, look at that, this is very fun. That is it. That is how you make a page. That's how you make a route. You don't have to do any extra configuration to just have these pages work. Now, page components in Next.js are pretty special because you can do some really neat things with it when the site loads. And so both for static and for server-side rendered pages, there's some really nice functions that you can use. And the one that I probably use the most is one called getStaticProps. So you do export async function get static props. Okay, now the return value of this function is passed to the page. And so if you were to call a bunch of APIs and put the values that you get from the APIs, the data you get from the APIs onto the page and you statically export this website, then those API calls happen at build time, not at runtime. And so you can really save a lot of time when your pages are being loaded on the screen for your users because it's happening at build time. That part is really exciting to me. So in this get static props, you can do a lot of different things. I'm going to call a very simple API. Const res, and we're going to get a response. And excuse me while I copy and paste from the Pokemon API. Okay, we've got res and then we're fetching. So we're going to fetch from the Pokemon API. We're going to get Charmander. I'm going to do const Pokemon is equal to a wait and then res.json, just like that. Oh, whoa, that was some... Sorry about that. Okay, cool. So now that we have these done, we have the data that we want. What we can do is we can return that to the page. So I'm going to return an object. The object will have props that are passed into the page. And then inside of there, I will pass in Pokemon, just like that. And so now, inside of home, we have props right here. And so I can get Pokemon from props. And then anything inside of Pokemon, I can pass to my app right here. And so, for example, instead of having Next.js demo right here, I could do something like Pokemon.name. So now it'll say Charmander and it'll say, how about this? Hi Charmander. And now I could say, for example, an image. I'll say image src equals, and then inside of here, Pokemon.sprites dot front underscore defaults. If you'd like to know this API, go look at the docs. I've used it enough where I happen to know how that works. Oh, and I forgot a little a wait down here. And so if I save that, and then refresh the page, look at that! We got hi Charmander in the title, and we got a little Charmander in here. And so again, this fetch call will happen at build time and won't happen at runtime. I think that is super cool. Now, I've talked a little bit about routes, talked a little bit about this whole get static props things. We can also generate static paths, and so we can build what different paths might be coming from an API route or something at build time. And we can also have dynamic routes. Now, if you want to have a dynamic route, what you would do is you would create a new file and you would say anything fish. JS, and you'll put it in brackets like this. And that means anything that matches the paths that would go to this fish.js is what would actually be returned to the user. I'm going to explain this to you with a prank example. So this is a prank project that I built. I'm very proud of this prank project. People have fallen for the prank, and that's truly what matters. So we have this home component, and in this home component it is a very, very basic thing. I actually used the same starter project that I showed before, and I have this header, let's prank people, and then I have a prank article right here. If you'd like to see it live, you can check it out in this let's prank people thing right here and be like, Cassidy did the... Cassidy did the best talk at Reactathon. And then if you click on it, get rickrolled. 
And so this is a fun little prank project where it shows the title here, it shows the title up here, and also I programmatically updated the head so it looks like a real article if you were to share it on social media. And so I'm just going to show you that head component really quick. Inside of this head component, you can see we have the title here, we have the open graph title, I made some graphics for it, it, it looks like a real article, and so if you were to actually paste a link to this on Twitter or something, you might just prank someone. And so this is, this is something that I had uh, a lot of fun with. And now, with this, I'm going to talk about a few different things. First of all, the dynamic routes. We mentioned this a little bit earlier. With these dynamic routes, it's a very similar thing as before, where we have a function, and it's exporting a component, and it's in a page component here because it is uh, in the pages directory. Now, because it's in the pages directory, we have access to certain functions. And so the functions that I used were that get static paths, which I mentioned a little bit, and get static props. Now, in get static props, instead of calling an API, what I did was I got the params of the URL, the parameters. And in get static paths, I actually return that to get static props. So in get static paths, this is something where I would say, hey, I'm calling, for example, the Pokemon API again, and I would have some variable paths, and then inside of there, I would have just all of the Pokemon names, Pokemon, Pokemon names in here, and then that paths variable would go right here, and so anytime I would go to my app slash Charmander, my app slash Bulbasaur or whatever, it would show data from that. But if you have nothing there, then it gets a little interesting. There's this thing called fallback. When you have fallback is false, that means any paths that are not defined inside of this array returns a 404. But if you have nothing defined in here and then you put true, that tells Next, hey, you can have other routes that aren't defined inside of here. And so if you define no paths, then you can have some user-defined paths. And so if I were to, for example, have a prank article, and if you look at the URL up here, I have this Cassidy did the best talk at Reactathon thing that's generated from that form. I can use that Cassidy did the best talk at Reactathon, I should have made it something shorter, and pull it in to the parameters here in get static props. Then I'll do two title case, and so I take out all of the dashes in there, add spaces, do uh, do some title casing in there, and then I pass it as props, and those, those props go to article right here. And then this is the page component, it's passed to the rest of the page. And so the prank head, which I showed you before, all of the metadata comes from that title. And then we have this, you have been pranked, this is pulling from the current date, and then uh, we have just the YouTube video there, um, and then we also have the title and we add not at the end because that's the best way to prank people. I learned that as a child. Anyway, so we have that. You can look at the page and you can see, again, you have the you have been pranked, you have the current date, we have this not after getting the title from there, and that's about it. We're just pulling everything from the URL. And so this is a really, really interesting concept where in Next.js, typically, this triggers something that's called incremental static regeneration. Now, what that means overall is that when you have a static website, you have a site that is built entirely. It's built once and then you can go to all the pages that were built. But if you don't necessarily know what routes a user might be going to, you will go to some other routes that don't exist and that haven't been built. And typically you can server side render those or you can do the incremental static regeneration thing. Now I'm gonna call it ISR because that's long. With ISR, what it does is Next.js builds that page at runtime and then later if a user is to go to that page, it will be cached and that page will exist in the future. Um, or you can server side render it. Either one works, but that's kind of how the whole fallback thing works. That's, that's how all of this works. Now, I've deployed this already, and there's one really cool thing that uh, we haven't talked a lot about at Netlify, but I'm really excited about it, and it is a Next.js build plugin. Now, if, whenever you have a website that you want to upload to Netlify, you have what's called a Netlify.toml, 
or what you do is you run a build command. You can have your Netlify functions in there, your redirects, all kinds of stuff. And we have this brand new thing called Netlify and then plug in Next.js. What this does is it allows you to do all of those things that require runtime functions, all those things that require server-side rendering with this plugin using Netlify functions. And so uh, what I really like about this is I can kind of write my next apps, deploy them wherever I'd like. With, with this plugin, I don't have to worry about making any code changes or anything to make sure everything works seamlessly on Netlify. And so I installed this package and that's actually it. If you, if you look at my package.json, it's very simple. We just install next react and react dom. Um, we build it when we want to build it and then Netlify builds it. And then uh, during that build, it has the plugin that runs the entire thing and ships it. And that is the entire pranking application. And I think that it's so fun that this, it's kind of a simple application, but you can see how it could get more complex. This, this functionality is so useful. Because if you are going the static site generation route, it's something that often results in very large builds where if you have thousands upon thousands of pages, you might have to wait a while for your entire site to build. Granted, your users will get tons of benefits because it's already built and loaded. You could just pull it from the CDN and it's done, but your builds take a while. With something like this, with these dynamic routes, being able to pull things from the server, you can have the best of both worlds, where some of your pages will be static pages that are just loaded from the CDN. But the ones where you have just a ton of blog posts, for example, or a ton of product pages, a ton of prank pages, something like this, you can just call a function. You can server side render it, you can run it at runtime, and it'll just work. And, and you don't have to wait for a build. It might take a little bit longer for the users, but honestly, I've experimented with this a lot. There's not that long of a wait. It's just a few milliseconds more. And so this is something that I, I think is really, really powerful, both for very serious business, but also for very fun pranks. That being said, I want to thank you so much for your time today. I've been Cassidy. I hope that you uh, have a good time at the rest of the conference. If you have any questions, I'm going to be around in the chat, or you could find me on the internet and talk about very serious things, but also please just talk to me about fun things. That would be so much more fun. And I'm happy to answer any uh, next questions, any Netlify questions. And if you'd like to see this project, it is on GitHub. And then you can also look at this URL that I am putting on the page post edit, where you can actually mess with the pranking application. Thanks so much for your time and have a good one.